Good morning, guys. Good to see you again. And this is a pleasant surprise to wake up to. But it does bring up an interesting point. Garbage truck just showed up outside. We'll wait. Much better. So, first thing this morning, I was over on Twitter just looking through all my feeds and everything. I saw an article pop up from Kevin Nether, Kevin the Tech Ninja. And this is an article that I'd seen mentioned a couple of times. It was something I think someone posted to medium.com. Sorry, my bad. It was on fusion.net. And it's an article by Gabby Dunn talking about and the title is, Get Rich or Die Vlogging the Sad Economics of Internet Fame. And it covers the idea that there are different levels of YouTubing. Of course, you have the very beginning level people. You've got the people that are not making any money making videos. They're not making any money from any sort of social media. They're surely doing it for the fun of it. Some people hope to make money and hope to be famous someday. And that's sort of who this article is targeted at. The people that think that this is something that you're just going to dive into and be famous on day two. There's the people at the high end of the spectrum, the people like the PewDiePies and the Captain Sparkles and the Markiplier's, the, the people that have millions and millions of subscribers that are able to do this as a full-time job, that have brand deals, they have huge amounts of income from merchandising and from, you know, book sales and all sorts of other baskets they have their eggs in. And then there's this third category. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this specifically is I kind of fit into this third category, sort of. The third category is the people that are in the middle, the people that have a medium amount of subscribers. And while I would consider myself to be on the low end of medium, I'm still sort of in there. I'm one of the people that is earning money from making videos on the internet. I'm earning money from content created and shared in social media platforms. Platform, but I'm not to the point where I'm doing this as a full-time job. And to be entirely honest, 100% honesty with you here, I never will be. But there are these people out there that have built up significant followings, much, much more so than myself. People with half a million, a million, a couple of million followers, people that make videos that get tens of millions of views that still are not making very much money doing it, either because they haven't done side brand deals, they haven't done sponsored videos, they haven't done merchandising, things like that, or just because making videos on the internet does not pay as well as you might think. One view very much does not equal one dollar. Now, I can't really speak authoritatively about how they are doing. They did a lot of that in the article, and I'll make sure to link the article down in the description if you want to see it, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of insight as to how I work. I have done this in the past, but sort of from a higher level this time. Like in the past, I've talked about brand deals and sponsorships and different avenues of earning money, but I thought I would take it more from a how YouTube money fits into my daily life, how, how percentage-wise, how it fits in even. And for this, we may have to go to the whiteboard. All right, so this is going to look and sound a lot like a Casey Neistat vlog. Sorry about that. That's just sort of the best way I could think of to present it. Okay, so my wife and I, we both work day jobs. Together, we earn our salaries. Let's say this is about how much we earn. Salary. You work your daily job to be able to attain a certain level of comfort in life. We will say that comfort level is right here, which means that anything above and beyond that comfort level line can go into savings, it can go towards extravagances, things like that. So according to the little chart that we've got established here, we do pretty well just on our own with our salaries. This has allowed us to live in a nice house, in a nice neighborhood, in a place that we're happy with, to drive pretty decent mid-range cars. You get the point. Now, on top of this salary, we're gonna put this little sliver here, and this is not gonna be entirely to scale, but pretty close. This little sliver represents, we'll just call it YT. YouTube earnings, online earnings, Amazon affiliate money, money I've earned from XDA, money I've earned from doing things on the internet. Here, we'll make it a little easier to read. So this is internet money. Now, like I said, this is not 100% to scale, obviously, but you'll notice this this as compared to that, significantly different. Because in the grand scheme of things, I make a very decent living from my day job, my wife makes a decent living from her day job, so we are very fortunate that we do not have to rely upon YouTube as a full-time thing. Which actually means that since we are that much above that comfort line, basically all of the money I earn from YouTube is stuff that I can reinvest into doing stuff on YouTube. So I'm in a very fortunate place that I've been able to afford to buy new cameras and new phones and new tablets and lighting setups and microphones and all of the little bits and pieces that I've needed to improve my YouTube career. And over time, this little portion has grown. When I first started out, obviously, this this portion was zero. Being a part of XDA has made that grow significantly, but then again, in the last few months, it's actually gone down again. But my own YouTube career, my own side of things has actually increased quite a bit. But just to sort of put it in perspective here, if this is the kind of thing that I am able to attain having approximately 50,000 total subscribers on YouTube. As I showed you just a few minutes ago, I've got 45,000 subscribers that I just hit on YouTube this morning and 5,000 subscribers on my second channel. So a total of 50,000 and there's going to be a lot of overlap there. If this is the kind of money that can be earned having around 50,000 subscribers, taking that and multiplying it to get to this level is gonna be about, let's say 10 to 12 times that much. So you take that 50,000 number and you multiply it by, let's say 10, and you get 500,000. You know how many people on YouTube are above that number? And that's just saying YouTube. That's not counting how many followers you have on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Tumblr or wherever else it is you choose to share your content. Now there are people that can do really well at a lower level than that. But to be sustainable, for someone like myself, this is probably a number that would have to be reached. And realistically speaking, I don't think that's ever gonna happen for me. And that's okay. Now the problem is there are people that are reaching this number. 
people like the person who wrote the article. But because this is not how they've been doing it all along, it means that every penny that they've been earning, they've been having to spend on staying alive. One part of the article was talking about going to a red carpet event with $80 in their bank account, or being at some sort of an event worrying about how they're gonna be able to buy groceries the next week. I'm not necessarily saying they're doing it wrong, but they kind of are. And not everybody can do it that way. A lot of people, in order to do it the way they had to, they had to dive in when the time was right, they had to grab that audience while the getting was hot. And so the way that I'm doing things may not be the best way for everybody. I'm not saying anybody should be able to do it the way that I'm doing it. I think what I am saying, the point I'm trying to make here is that while yes, there are ways for people to make it full time on YouTube, it's not for everybody. If you can hit this kind of number on YouTube, if you can get to half a million subscribers and you're earning the kind of money that you think that you could go full time doing it, that's something to think about. But when you're at this kind of number, this is a fun hobby. This is something that I enjoy doing and this is something I plan to continue doing. This is something that helps keep my fun alive. It helps keep me in technology. It helps keep me in new toys. But this is not something that I would consider my full-time gig. And I don't ever think it will be. That's not to say that I'm giving up, because like I said, I'm still having fun doing this. This is still keeping new toys coming in. So that's good for me. But I guess the point that I really want to make is don't be discouraged by this. Don't think there's absolutely no way it could ever happen. Just don't dive in 100% until you do have a game plan. Because even though your channel may grow really, really fast and all of a sudden hit 500,000 subscribers or a million subscribers, you have to really plan out and make sure that that is a sustainable thing. Because at the end of the day, YouTube could just disappear tomorrow. Not saying it's going to, but it's a technical possibility. The advertisers could pull out. The brand deals that everyone is working so hard to attain could disappear. Which is why so many of the YouTubers that you know and love are moving into other areas. A lot of them are moving into TV shows. A lot of them are moving into merchandising. As I said, they're writing books. They're selling t-shirts. The point of this, this tiny little bit that I drew that really wasn't necessary, is that there are really two middle tiers of YouTube people. There are the people that are actively trying to do this as a full-time gig, and that's great, and I do wish them luck at it. And there are people like myself, the people that are, uh, unfortunately, a little bit more realist. The people that do have their day jobs and their day lives, where you currently have my day job salary, my wife's salary put together here, that allow us to live like this, and then we do have this YouTube thing on the side. I think I'm gonna stop there. So I went on for entirely too long there, and I don't know how much of that, if any, is ever gonna see the light of day. But basically the point that I was trying to make is, if you are a new YouTuber, if you're brand new to this, do it because you love it. If money does become involved, great. Don't just immediately jump into it thinking, I'm gonna be the next big star and I'm gonna be super hot. If you're in the middle of the road and you've been doing this for a while and you're growing your channel and you're amassing a following and you're earning money from doing it, again, don't be in too big of a hurry to jump into doing it 100% full time. Make sure that you've got all of your expenses covered. Make sure that you've got a long-term plan. Make sure that you have a goal. Because I've been doing this myself for six years now. The end of December will officially be six years that I've been on YouTube. And as you may have seen from the little chart that I showed over there, the earnings that I make from YouTube, from Amazon, from XDA, from everything that I do online is still maybe a tenth of what my wife and I earn together. Now, I'm not trying to belittle the amount that my wife and I earn together. We are comfortable. We are doing well. But that's just sort of to put it in perspective that there is no way that having 45 or 50,000 subscribers that I could ever be a full-time YouTuber at this point. If my channel were to grow to 10 times its existing size, it still wouldn't be a feasible thing because having that day job, having that security, also means that I have insurance. Because while it has become a whole lot easier for people, especially YouTubers, to get health insurance now, it is still ridiculously expensive to get health coverage. And having my day job, it's, it's still expensive to have health care coverage because I'm paying for the entire family, but I can afford it because I have a job that pays me well enough to pay for it. Anyway, very, very long drawn out thing there. I don't know if that's even going to be helpful to anybody, but it's something I kind of wanted to get off my chest this morning. All right, that is a very, very busy morning wrapped up. <sighs> Yeah, sorry if this vlog has gone on really, really long at this point. I did take a few minutes, I, well, more than a few minutes, and I went ahead and filmed a video for the main channel. I've gotten so many comments over the last few days, dozen or more comments, just basically saying, December 21st, you've got to register all your drones, the cops are coming, oh, the sky is falling. People just terrified, I guess, or, or amused maybe by the fact that the FAA has started implementing some regulations, some rules that say that you have to have all your drones registered. Not really. Anyway, I'm going into all that detail. It's, go, it's in the video. The video is going to be going up on the main channel hopefully later today it was very very quickly done it's a horrible mess but hopefully it does get the point across it's like a seven minute video just me talking about the regulations talking about the potential fines the potential penalties talking about the actual weight limits and what fits into what category you know as to whether or not you really need to be worried about it and how much it's going to cost and when you have to renew all the details about it so do make sure to check out that video if you're into quadcopters and drone flying now the other thing was i was talking to tk just now he was uh, talking about the the giveaway and how all of the people all the people for the giveaway that we did with tk and kevin and zach they were all international and that got me to talk 
talking to him about the OnePlus case giveaway that I did. That just wrapped up last night, late, late last night, and so as soon as it was done, I hit the draw winner button. Now, when I announced that giveaway, I announced it in a video. In the video, I said, because shipping to any other country would be so ridiculously, prohibitively expensive that it was going to be a US-only giveaway. I even put it in the terms and, terms and conditions of the giveaway, US only, sorry. So I, I tried to make it as clear as possible. I think it was the first three winners that I drew were from India and the UK. And I'm sorry to those people, the people that I drew, and I'm not gonna mention names obviously, because as soon as I saw that it was not in the US, I said invalidate and pick another winner. Because I said ahead of time, this was a US only thing. This is something I received for free from OnePlus. It's something that I'm just wanting to give to someone to be nice, you know, it's the end of the year. I'm not trying to spend $50 to ship a $20 case to somebody around the world. So I did draw another name and it went to a guy that lives in Texas or Arkansas, I can't remember which. I've gotten in touch with him, he has replied to me already, so he is a valid person. And I did not even realize, it is already 1 p.m. and I have not had lunch yet. I've just been go, 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 going all morning. Which is especially difficult when this has been going all day. Christina's making some sort of uh, chicken taco, chicken burrito, something for dinner tonight. And of course, working from home, I am having to smell that the entire day. Which, you know, right as I'm starting to really get my appetite back, good timing, I guess. But it's, it's torturing me the whole day. See, the sad thing is, I just took a little bit more time and I went back through all the footage that I've shot today for this channel. I've got a total of over 11 minutes of footage that's already in today's vlog. That's after cutting out a lot. And I still don't think that I've really gotten my point across about the stuff I was talking about this morning. I'm not even entirely sure what my point was, really. I guess it's just that I work really, really hard to be in the position that I'm in, and I do hope that you guys know that I appreciate the position I've been allowed to be put in, but it's not even that I've been put there, it's that I've put myself in that position. Because I've been working at this for six solid years now. I work a day job to be able to afford to work this night job. I have a very loving and understanding family that allows me and affords me the time to do this night job. And actually this daily vlogging thing, because of them, because of my family, I've been able to do this daily vlogging thing. They've been very, very supportive of it. But I think one of the sort of key things there to understand is that this is not really as easy as it might look. Because doing the kind of things that I do involves a lot of in-between moments. As I was mentioning, spent a little bit of time getting video edited from this morning. Spent a little bit of time shooting video this morning. That's in between doing stuff for the day job. That's in between dealing with things that Christine sins to me to do during the day. That's in between. In about nine minutes here, I have to go get Duncan off the bus, sitting through meetings for work. Oh, look, I've got a couple of minutes between meetings. Let me go ahead and edit this. While we're in the middle of this, let me go ahead and pull out the camera and I'll shoot a little bit of B-roll of this phone. Let me research a couple of specs about this device that I'm planning to pick up, all while maintaining the day job, while maintaining the family, while making sure that Duncan learns enough, while he gets all the lessons he needs from me. It's a really, really tough juggling act. And I'm not entirely trying to bat pat myself on the back there, but I think that's exactly what I'm doing. Sorry. And I just stopped for a minute there to answer a half dozen comments. Awesome. But that's sort of what I'm getting at. Even in addition to doing a full-time day job to be able to support the family, this little teeny bit extra that I get from doing YouTube stuff, I get from working an additional more than 40 hours a week from video creation, from research, from production time, from that's messages coming in always. And I do it because I love it. That's the key thing to glean from this. Don't do it because you want to be rich. Don't do it because you want to be famous. Don't do it because you want to be the top of anything. Do it because you like doing it. Do it because you like some of the little perks that come along with it, but do it because you like doing it. Bloop, welcome home. How's your back today? Good. Doing better? Surviving? Mm -hmm. Did you find the elf? Yeah. Where is he? What? What? What is he doing in there? You booger. You booger. <laughs> that booger. Bookers. <laughs> and now time to do homework. I guess I didn't think far enough ahead whenever I started working on this video. I probably should have thought farther ahead. I'm getting lots of comments. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm getting lots of comments coming in on the FAA drone video, and lots and lots of them are basically, this isn't right, this isn't the way that it ought to be done. Lots of back and forth opinions on it. I just wanted to sort of address the concerns that people had had, address my thoughts on it, and it has very much turned into sort of a, a flaming back and forth. No, it's wrong, you shouldn't do it this way. Everybody's just gonna be illegal about it. Okay, cool. I. <laughs> I think that's that's another part of the reason why I really got deep into addressing the fact that this is not full time for me earlier is because 
there are so many things like this that happen. This is why, actually why I've avoided so many potentially controversial subjects over the, over the years. It's because this is not a full-time thing for me, so I don't have full time to devote to arguing with people on the internet. I know the, the true answer there is, you know, stop paying attention to the comments, but I don't want to stop paying attention. I talk to you guys in the comments. That's how we have our back and forth, aside from just me talking to you the next day. I read all of the comments. However, with this, there are going to be some of them that I just blatantly ignore. You know, I've put my opinion out there, and I will answer some of these as I see them, but for the grand majority of them, people with the tinfoil hat on, you know, I'm afraid of what the government's going to do, and they're going to do it wrong. Okay, that's not up to me and you to discuss. I don't, I don't care enough to continue. Thank you. Goodbye. Boo, welcome home. She's running super duper late. Yeah, gotta yeah. go to the pharmacy. Yeah. But we have to run to Duncan's school, because he has some sort of singing thing. Christmas something. Woo. Singing and dog yelling. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that was a little bit of a bummer. You know, we uh, we got there very early, but all the seats were marked as reserved near the front, and it would have been fine. But right as they were bringing the kids onto the stage, they put Duncan right square, smack dab in the middle of the, of the performance, and the teacher was super duper tall, so she was blocking all of him, and there were two kids in front of him, so even when I went up to the reserved section in the front, I couldn't even get him in the frame. He was blocked every angle I went at, so. Still good to be able to be there and be able to hear all this class and everything, right? You had fun doing it, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, good. And we are home, and it is food time, and someone is sandwiching all of the sandwiches. While the rest of us are tacoing the tacos with taco time. And you are missing taco time because you are not a taco boy. I don't like tacos. That's okay. You may someday. You will. But for now, taco time. And apparently, my blood sugar bottomed out and my hydration bottomed out or something. So while we were at this performance thing, ugh, I don't even know. Lightheaded, dry, I almost fell over. It was <laughs> taco time. I am not one who normally likes weird. Chips. By the way, she just discovered that I've opened the bag of the sour, sub, southern biscuits and great those that I've had a few of. And like she was saying, she doesn't eat the weird chips. I do. Eat the weird chips. It's gonna hit you an awful lot like sour cream and onion right at first, and then it's gonna have a follow up of sausage, sausage gravy. It's kind of a weird mix. I called it interesting, and I use the word interesting when I usually describe things I don't like. It's hard to process. It's really weird. It Did does taste like sour cream and onion when you first put it in your mouth, but then it doesn't. Because yeah. it has that follow-up of, of, of very strong sausage gravy. Not so much biscuit. I don't taste any biscuit. Oh, it's just kind of weird. Kind of weird. That's pretty much exactly what I said. Not bad, not great, just interesting. Interesting is the only word I can come up with. <laughs> it means that it's something that I can eat. It's not something I'm gonna actively seek out but she is still eating them. And of course, he's just munching Doritos because that's like his goal in life. He is going to turn into a Dorito. That's his, his occupation. He's going to be a professional Dorito at age 21. And apparently, even though it is kind of late in the evening, DHL is still running. Normally they show up here at about one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon, but it's like 6.30 and she just dropped by. And package from China showed up. And I think, if this is what I think it is, this was shipped out like two days ago. Interesting, has a little adapter. Hopefully that won't be necessary. But this has the FQ777 Wi-Fi FPV. I don't think it's actually gonna be FPV. It's gonna be Wi-Fi with a little camera built into it. It's kind of like the Cheerson CX-10C, but smaller, I guess, or maybe the same size. Either way, little teeny tiny thing with a 640 by 480 camera, very cool. And then we also have what I think is, I think this is the Geek Box. Yeah, Geek Box. It's a little Android powered, actually it's Android slash Ubuntu, which is what made it kind of interesting to me. 4K capable, does HDMI 2.0, uh, ARM 64-bit processor, two gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, Wi Wi-Fi AC, uh, 1000 megabit per second ethernet, and it does come running Android 5.1 as well as Ubuntu it dual boots, and it's open source, and they're developer friendly and all of that stuff. The thing about it is this chip in it, the ARM64 chip, was actually a rock chip processor, and that's one of the things that concerned me about it when she first mentioned it to me, but then she showed me the developer-related information, and it's like they're actually working to try to do better developer relations, so 
I'm definitely interested in making videos about it. I thought there was gonna be a third thing in here, but apparently not. And the whole box kind of smells like paint, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And yeah, looking back at the original email, the, it was uh, this was all done through geekbuying.com. There was supposed to be one more thing coming. It was the JJRC, which one was it? The H22C. Although the original email she sent me said H22C, but then linked to the H20C. So maybe, I don't, I don't even know. I'm not even gonna be concerned about it. I've gotten myself a little bit backed up on quadcopter reviews at the moment anyway. So at this point I am, what, four down. Cause I have the Shinlin X162, the U807, the JXD509G, and then this little teeny one that just showed up. So. I haven't even unboxed the, the 509G one that I mentioned before. I just have, I've let myself fall behind. And actually, this showed up earlier in the mail. I think this is something I was supposed to do something about for XDA, but it's been so many months since they even emailed me about it, I don't even know. And if it's for XDA, there's not gonna be a video on XDA about a single micro USB cable. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. Maybe on my channel, maybe. Maybe as like a, a recommended for Christmas list kind of thing, even though it's a little bit too late for that at this point. But the, this is the mic flip or mic flip. It's a fully reversible micro USB cable. At least it's supposed to be fully reversible. It says it on the package, but it's a data and charge cable. It's braided. It's got an aluminum shell and gold coating and a reversible micro USB plug. But the other end, unfortunately, is not reversible. So you have one end that is the normal painful USB standard and the other one that's micro USB that actually is reversible. So kind of good, kind of bad. And since we did not get to finish it up last night, and dinner is done and it's really dark in here, but that's okay. It is time to finish up episode three of Potato Cannon. That TV's really loud. And we forgot Advent Book. We'll, we'll fix that now. All right, Advent Book time. Shred it, tear it apart. Don't tear the book. What is that? It's a new book. Flat Stinky. Flat Stinky. No. <laughs> Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley and the Firehouse. There's more words there. And the firehouse? Yep. <laughs> I've got to receive read that. Yep. Cool. Have you read any Flat Stanley books? Nope. Well, now you shall. <gasps> and now you shall. Well, it is much, much later at this point. It's actually already after 10 p.m. We watched the movie. Duncan got really, really into it. We'd already seen most of the movie, but we, we finished it up tonight. And I think he's really looking forward to watching episode six to get prepared for episode seven. Hopefully we'll get to see it this weekend. I just had a moment of panic. Probably an hour ago, came to the realization that I hadn't done the XDA video yet. I hadn't actually even scripted it yet. Christina reminded me, luckily. So after Duncan was in bed, I went ahead and got the script done, got everything set up, got everything filmed, just finished filming, turned around to put the card from the camera into the computer, dropped it. When I picked up the card, just now, there was a little piece that was sticking out on it. Just a little tiny plastic piece, right there where all of those little metal tips are, there was one plastic piece jutting out. And so I was convinced the card was gonna be absolutely ruined. I plugged it in, luckily all the data is still there. Not even really that concerned with the data that's on it, I just didn't wanna to have to re-record the XDA video. And I did also have the clips from Duncan's singing thing today, but the clips were not really any good, as you will have seen by now. I was very, very upset by that. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take some time and I'm gonna edit the XDA video. That's gonna be loads and loads of fun. Hopefully it'll go pretty quickly though. And I've gotta get another bottle of water. I have been absolutely just drained, dehydrated. I think my body is finally starting to catch up and realize, oh wait, there was a day and a half there where you didn't have anything. You need water. <laughs> So I'm parched, I'm completely dry. I've gone through two, two and a half bottles of water this evening and normally I would have had zero. I, I know, I need more than that. But I'm about to go have another big bottle of water right now. Ah, uh, XDA video is edited and just another not so subtle reminder as to why I love this new machine. We're already 40% done and I just hit this just a minute or two ago. It says it's got three minutes left. The video is a total of about four minutes long so I wouldn't expect it to take any longer than about four minutes total and that's about what it's gonna take. And that is, that's awesome. I can totally handle that. By the way, completely forgot to mention that earlier. A couple of you guys were asking about Duncan to make sure he's okay. He's he's perfectly fine. He's six, they get hurt. It's just what happens. In this case, he somehow or another tripped in the bathroom on the toilet. I, I don't know. Hit the wall, had a mark on his back about this big. I checked on it today. I checked on it several times throughout the day and it is looking much, much better. It's still there. It's still a little bit raised, but not too much, but we're keeping a close eye on it just to make sure everything is okay. If anything changes, if anything it's worse, obviously we will take him to the doctor first thing. And at this point, you know what? I have finished editing today's vlog and I'm rapidly working my way through a bottle of water. We are currently at 23 and a half minutes and it's just gonna be going up from there. So I probably ought to go ahead and wrap things up for today. Hopefully you guys didn't mind me rambling on and on and on about money and YouTube 
careers and you, this being a second part-time full-time job for me even though it's not a full-time thing for me and never will be it's something I definitely wanted to make sure to get off my chest and hopefully I did it eloquently enough to sort of make sense if you do have any questions about it do feel free to ask I can always answer them here in the vlog or I can answer them in comments as you've seen I answer comments all the time or you can reach me on Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus or wherever else. I am all of the places, all of the time. People do regularly find that out. They'll tweet something at me or they'll comment at me or they'll poke me on some social media site and not think that I'm ever going to reply to it. And then I immediately reply and they're like, wait, what? Because that's just what I do. And that all ties into everything that I talked about earlier. So it is an excellent way to wrap up the day. Loads and loads and loads more videos to be made always. And loads more stuff to be talked about. Loads more products coming in. So many more things to talk about. So I've got to dive back in. Maybe, to maybe tomorrow. I was so busy today. The XDA stuff got me thrown off. As as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Tomorrow will be another excellent day. Maybe I'll get my voice back a little bit. Thank you for spending the day with me and my family. We will see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.